let us pray. Holy God, we gather today to celebrate your goodness to us as a people. We gather today to celebrate the fact that you are a healing God, a God who gives life to a world even when we seem to be in turmoil. And so we pray that our worship of you today will be one which celebrates the fact that you are the light. And so in spite of the challenges that we face, we can rest assured that you are with us. Through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We process in silence as we remain in silence. and 24. One, two, four. <laughs> God, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. O thou, to whom our hearts are open, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts. O thou, to whom all desires are known, purify our desires. O thou, to whom no secrets are hid, Make known to our inner life. Strengthen us to grow into that divine likeness which thou didst plant in us at our creation, that our feelings may rise from love and holiness, and our thoughts be governed by truth. O Creator God, redeeming Lord, and sanctifying Spirit. Amen. The act of penitence. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the righteous bear thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Let us ask God for pardon and peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned against you and against our brothers and sisters in thought, word, and deed, in the wrong we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all our sins and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. In Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen.
whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which, is, which gives life to the world. Evermore, give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Samuel chapter 16, reading from 1 through to 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out, and I will send you Jesse to Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eli, Eli and, said, and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. Look on, the, look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shaman pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all of you sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is in keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for he will not sit down until he comes. He said, He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, and in the presence of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Rome. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. for today is Psalms 23 and can be found on page 495. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall, I shall not, not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And leads me beside still waters. 
He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians 5, 8 to 14. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Others were saying, no, 
what it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept on asking him, then how were your eyes open? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son? Who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees. Nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this, because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, He is of age, so ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind. And they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sin, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that he had, they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, 
you have seen him. And the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do not those who do see may become like. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have seen. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Christ. Life. 
unfortunately. There are some people who still hold fast to the belief that whenever we are sick, whenever we have committed a great sin, or we are going through hard times and are facing distressful situations, such as that of the coronavirus that we are facing now, it is God who is punishing us. However, Jesus made it clear in John 9, 3 to 5, that this is not so. We are a people who are living under grace. And so it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world, said Jesus. Jesus is coming is therefore geared at dispelling darkness from a sick world. Be that we take it figuratively or literally. So in light of this, we should understand that sickness is not punishment from God. But we can use same to reveal the glory of God in our lives and even the wider world. So when we are sick and in pain at home, we should not just sit and allow the pain or sickness to take control of us. Instead, we should see to rise above the pain or sickness, knowing that we serve a God who heals, a God who will give us the strength that we need to do what we have to do. This, my friends, is healing. Because we do not act in our own strength. Rather, we act in the strength of Almighty God. So notice how Jesus added value to the life of this blind man. As he first spat on the ground, made mud with his saliva, and then anointed, anointed his eyes with the mud. John 9, verse 6. Following this, Jesus instructed the man to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And when he did so, he came back to Jesus. And yes, my brothers and sisters, his sight was restored. Many were surprised when they saw him. As some questioned whether or not he was the same beggar. And even though he told them, yes, it was he, many still don't believe as seen in John 9, verse 9. Even the Pharisees were questioning him. How is it that he received his sight? And the Jews as seen in John 9, verse 19, did not believe that he was blind. One thing, however, that we as Christians should all grow to appreciate about this man was the consistency that he displayed about his belief in Jesus. As in spite of what the others were saying, each time, without hesitation, he confidently asserted to his neighbors who knew him, the man called Jesus, put mud on my eyes, and I see, as seen in John 9, verse 11. To the Jews, who did not believe he was born blind, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know is that though I was blind, now I see. And in John 9, verse 32, he further asks, Never since the world began. Has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind? If this man were not from God, he would do nothing. So convinced, my friends, was this blind man of what Jesus really, of who Jesus really was and what Jesus would do. That he came to a belief and acceptance of the saving and the delivering power of him and what he can even do for us today as a people. So no matter what ill they wanted to see about Jesus, he was not going to entertain it. He proudly stood up, defended and demonstrated his love and belief in Jesus the Messiah, the one who saves. However, these Jews would have none of it. As stated in John 9 verse 32, you were born entirely in sin. And are you trying to teach us? A 
And as a result of this, they drove him out of the synagogue. When Jesus learned that he was driven out of the synagogue, Jesus found him and asked, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him, said the man who was blind. When Jesus told him that he, Jesus, is the Son of Man, John 9 verse 38 tells us that the man exclaimed, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. This man, my brothers and sisters, had, a, had obviously seen the light. Not only through gaining his sight, but through the spiritual rebirth he had, having encountered Jesus. As mentioned earlier, he had experienced who Jesus is and what he can do for all who believe in him. So in spite of the challenges that we face, it is important that we as a church and as a country remember that Jesus is omnipresent, which means he is everywhere and will always provide care and make way for us as a people. So in spite of the fears and anxieties with which we are faced now, I want us to remember that God is still here with us. Like the unnamed blind man, we too may be facing opposition when others do not understand how God has helped and delivered us in the past. Like the Jews who challenged him, so too our neighbors, our family members and others may want to challenge us about our belief in Jesus. My brothers and sisters, how many times in recent years have we been spared from hurricane or earthquakes? The Lord was with us then and he is with us now. Yes, this period is a challenging one. Some of us may be facing monetary challenges, relationship issues, or even ill health as it relates to the coronavirus. Now is not the time to give up. Now is the time to throw the towels and believe all hope is lost. Because we serve a God who is real. A God who has taken us through adversities and struggles in the past. A God who is faithful. A God who will never leave us nor forsake us. In fact, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, reminds us, be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you, but nor forsake you. There are some who will state that our refusal to attend church during this pandemic is a sign of our lack of faith. However, I want us to remember today that the foundation of the church rests on three pillars, scripture, tradition, and reasoning. That third pillar mentioned, reasoning, is one which reminds us that we must seek to be practical and do what is necessary to preserve the lives and well-being of our people. When the devil brought Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple, and he asked Jesus to test or to prove God's ability to save and deliver him from his fall, Jesus responded to the devil, you should, you should not put the Lord your God to the test. So why should we want to test the Lord our God, my friends? As some church leaders, are encouraging. Do we really need to prove a point to anyone? Most definitely not. We must use our brain, our God-given intellectual abilities, and let good sense prevail among us. We must use wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and in whatever way possible, take the necessary steps to protect and to preserve lives, following the advice of the health authorities. You see, my sisters and brothers, I want us to realize that this in and of itself is healing as well. Especially as we listen to the voice of Jesus telling us 
what to do during this trying time. Like Jesus healed this blind man, so it is that Jesus wants to heal the world of this virus. Because this is in the very nature and character of who God is. But we must do our part. And we must allow God's healing hand to work in and through us as a people, just as this man who was born blind did. When Jesus instructed him to go and wash in the pool, this he did, obeying the instructions of Jesus. Besides, how many of us realize that by remaining at home, many of us are being given the prime opportunity to receive healing that we never expected. Many of us are now getting a chance to heal broken relationships and strengthen those bonds of love among family members and friends. We're able to draw closer together as we bond and interact with each other. We should therefore embrace this God-given period and make the most of the blessings that God has given to us. And so yes, even in the midst of the turmoil, God can be experienced. Additionally, I want us to be clear that our God wants to heal us. Not only of the coronavirus that is affecting us, but from all other forms of sicknesses that we may have as well. The arthritis, the blindness, the heart condition, the knee and the back problem to name a few. Jesus, as the light of the world, came to give us life as a people. And so it is for us to believe and accept this reality. It is never the intention of God for any of us to remain in such a state of being. As mentioned earlier, some people believe that we are sick because of our sins, because we are under a curse. I want to challenge us today to change this mindset of belief and simply turn and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Jesus stated in John 9 verse 5, before spitting on the ground to make mud in order to heal the blind man, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And notice the question. Do you accept Jesus as the light of the world as this blind man did? The one who is the savior and the redeemer. The problem with many of us is that we want to interpret healing as a full recovery, for instance. And I want us to realize that this is not always the case. This notion is not wholesale. As if a Paul was forced to live with a thorn in his flesh. And so for those of us who are praying for healing, and in our opinion, we are not getting it, always remember, God's grace is sufficient for you. God's grace is sufficient for you. God will sustain you, my brothers and sisters. It's not because we are under a curse, but we should further understand that we are making it through life, not by our own strength, but by the strength of Almighty God. So continue to pray for healing of your sickness. Continue to pray for healing of this coronavirus affecting our country, because it is God who is doing that good work to give us the strength to do what we need to do in spite of the illness. Finally, I want us to remember, my friends, that what Jesus wants is for us to give our lives to him. And this is the greatest healing that we can receive. The healing of our souls. The ways in which we accomplish this are through repenting of our lives, repenting of our evil ways, and turning our lives around and seeking to do good. Like this man, who was blind. Without fear, he boldly confessed the goodness of Jesus to his neighbors. John 9, verse 11. Like this man, 
When he received his sight, he confidently defended and witnessed Jesus' character and ability to heal when the Jews came to him. John 9, verse 27. And so it is that we too must be convinced in our own minds of who Jesus is and what he can do for us as a people. He has proven himself time and time and again. So why should we doubt during this time that we are affected by the coronavirus? As we continue to grapple with the coronavirus, let us, let us remember that our God heals and that God is always willing to help us in our times of distress. As we look forward to Easter, there, my brothers and sisters, lies our hope. That in Christ Jesus, who overcame the sting of sin and death, we will overcome even with this COVID-19 virus that is affecting our country. Let us also continue to pray for healing during this Lenten period. As we use the period to reflect on our lives, the sins that we have committed, and how it is that we need to give our lives to God. My friends, let us allow God to open our blinded eyes, not only for physical healing, but even for the healing of our souls. By being forgiving, loving, kind, respectful, and repentant. Let us be confident in who we are as disciples of Jesus because our God is faithful and will always make a way for us as his beloved children. So do not be afraid. Be firm in the faith and never hesitate to passionately proclaim your belief in Jesus as the one who saves, the one who delivers, the one who gives life light to all the world. Amen. page 104. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. For all that is seen in our unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of thee, one in thee to the Father, through him all things were for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the Lord. Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the Catholic
your intercessory prayer, your response will be scatter the darkness from our hearts and mind. Scatter the darkness from our hearts and minds. Father, creator of light, we remember all who walk in darkness, all who do not know your love, all who are unaware of your light. We pray that your church may shine as a light in the world and bring all peoples to you who are the true light. We pray especially for our leaders, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Howard, Diocesan Bishop and Archbishop of the West Indies, Robert and Leon Suffolk Bishops, Winston, Ronaldo and Orlando, and to all others who hold office in your church. We pray for all who go out in mission, all who proclaim your love. Jesus, light of the world, scatter the darkness from our hearts and minds. We pray for Patrick, the Governor General, Andrew, the Prime Minister, Peter, leader of the opposition, and all members of Parliament, the Senate, councillors, the judi judiciary, and group leaders. We pray for all who are caught up in works of darkness, those who misuse your world, those who have no respect for people or their feelings, those who deal in wickedness and vice, that a new awareness may conquer your blindness, a new vision may dispel your darkness. Jesus, light of the world, scatter the darkness from our hearts and minds. Lord, forgive the hurt we cause by our own blindness. May the brightness of your light bring joy to our homes new love to our relationships, deep peace to our communities. Jesus, light of the world, scatter the darkness from our hearts and minds. We pray for all who are blind, for all whose sight is failing. We remember all whose minds are darkened by fear or sin all who are beset by dark deeds of the past. We pray for the healing of the past in our lives and our communities. We pray for all who are consumed by hatred or by desire for revenge. We pray also for those who are ill, for those who have been affected by COVID-19, and for those who have been working to find a cure. We also pray for our sick and shuttings, especially those in this year. Jesus, light of the world, scatter the darkness of our hearts and minds. We praise you for all who have entered into a full vision of all who have awakened to your glory in heaven. We pray that we may not sorrow for the departed, but rejoice in their freedom. Jesus, light of the world, scatter the darkness from our hearts and minds. During this moment of silence, let us pray for our needs and those of others. Lord, open our eyes to your presence, open our ears to your call, open our hearts to your love, that we may give ourselves to you and walk before you as children of light, through him who is the light of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
the kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. They who thus serve Christ are accepted to God and approved by others. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. for the coffee tree, 125.
to proclaim the glory of your name. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it for the remembrance. Blessed Adam, 
and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your sins. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, in songs of everlasting praise.
down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever.
page 148. We use the second post communion prayer, page 148. Jesus Christ, Son of God, make yourself known to us. Jesus Christ, Son of God, make yourself known to us. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, speak to us, to us. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Bow your heads for God's blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, to take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The hill, 220, 220. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.